I don't know how I'm gonna do this video. Are you not crying? Are you not crying? Hi. So I've been wanting to make this video for literally more than two months, but I've been putting it off. Partially out of anxiety and partially out of gaslighting myself into thinking that things would magically get better. But man, do they suck ass exponentially harder each day? So fuck it, I'm just ripping off the band-aid and doing it now. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I need help, which is something I don't particularly enjoy asking for, but I gotta remind myself that it's okay to ask for help. Breaking Bad would have been three episodes long if Walt took the help offered to him. I don't even know what to say to you. I don't even know where to begin. Sorry for you, Walt. Fuck you. So, you know what? I'm not gonna be like him. First, let me just give some backstory and context though. I'll be as brief as I possibly can. As many of you are aware, I am stuck in this wonderful collapsing land known as Egypt. Now, aside from exchange rates making every effort to get out an uphill battle, and the fact that our passport is about as useful as toilet paper when it comes to accessing other countries, there is another issue that is more specific. You see, military service here is mandatory, and I am aware this isn't exclusive to Egypt. There are other countries where it's mandatory, but it's different here. And let me tell you how, and you'll see for yourself why I would rather literally kill myself than do it. Aside from the fact that I refuse to serve the people who have quite literally ruined my and millions of other people's lives, did you know that military service here is unpaid? Well, it technically is paid, but you only get like 320 Egyptian pounds per month. That's currently at $10, according to the official exchange rate of 31 Egyptian pounds per US dollar. And even less if we use the actual price, which you can find through the black market, which is currently at 40 to 45 per US dollar. So while, yes, it is paid, it might as well just not be. And if that wasn't bad enough, your travel to your service location is not free. Unless you take the train, conscripts get free travel there. And your expenses at the service location are also not paid, which is intentional to milk you for every penny possible, because while the food in mess is horrendous, according to literally everyone who has tried it, seriously, I've heard horror stories about it, it so happens that they have a canteen on most sites, and that canteen is not free like the mess. So if you want to have any form of decent food while you're there, you have to pay them, the people you're working for, nearly for free. I saw a post online where someone did the math and it turns out your service costs you, on average, 2,000 to 2,700 Egyptian pounds monthly, almost 10 times the amount you make. So you quite literally have to pay in order to work for free while also being humiliated, physically and verbally abused every step of the way, of course, for a whole ass year. And some specializations serve longer too, up to three years. And if you land a spot as a reserve officer, you basically have to stay under call until you fucking retire. So your whole life is pretty much under their command and you have no say in it whatsoever. It's not like you applied for that job or anything. It's mandatory for all males. As for the other reasons, I don't wanna go there. When you hear the words military service, I'm sure you picture one of two things. The first one being a boot camp with some drill sergeant yelling creative insults at the to be cannon father while they do push ups and cry, which does happen. But that is not the service, it's just the basic training, the boot camp. The second thing you would picture is actual service wearing the uniform, serving in your homeland or some foreign land to keep peace or steel oil, gun in hand, radio on your waist, picture of what you're fighting for in your pocket to keep you going. But that's not really the case here for many people. Yes, you could end up thrown in Sinai or on the borders, which is the cruelest fate possible. You do have to do actual fighting there that you were never trained for. A less life ruining fate would be to be thrown in one of their many civil projects or work as a personal driver or servant, aka a personal bitch, for a high ranking officer. Then you still get humiliated and underpaid, but at least you aren't likely to die, like on the borders or in Sinai. So that's an upgrade, I guess. So anyway, legally, there are conditions to get relief or postpone your service. Unfortunately, I don't meet any of the relief conditions and I'm not willing to take the coin flip with the medical examination because according to their own rules, I'm unfit, but... The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. 
it's entirely up to the officer on site at the time and if you get accepted you've sealed your fate you will not be issued a travel permit which is something we need in order to travel your passport alone isn't enough you can't just book a ticket and go like people do in the free world and you will get arrested and fined and or do jail time and then be dragged in and forced to do it anyways alternatively i could wait until i'm 30 which is the maximum age for service then i could throw them some money and be free but that's still a long ass way that's more than one third of my fucking life and until then i can't even start my life here not that i want to and if i'm only free to start my life at fucking 30 and then even then probably gonna take some years to get anything going i might as well just drive the wrong way on the highway and try to go for a world record so that's a no-go the other option is to postpone it which i am able to do for now but i'm running out of time you can stall with college but you can only do it for so long before you get expelled oh did i mention that the military service ensures you forget the 10 percent you retained of what you learned since you do it between college and work another problem that comes with this is that my passport student passport is only valid for six months and i can only get it made or renewed in summer or winter breaks additionally i can't travel internationally at all once i enter the last year of college which means i have also sealed my fate to either do it or wait till i'm 30 because then i simply won't get a travel permit which i can't leave the airport without until i finish my college go do the service like a good slave and then i'm free to do what i want with whatever is left of my life and myself all that being said you now know in detail why I'm desperate to get the fuck out of here ASAP, aside from the fact that Egypt is a shithole and is falling apart. It has been my goal for years now, and I've had multiple plans to do so. Back when I was full of hope and energy, as opposed to pain and rage, I was planning to work online, save a few dollars, and live here like a king, or get out on my own pace. As soon as I did land my first art sale, which amounted to $105 in like 2019, when the Egyptian pound still held some resemblance of value, the Central Bank of Egypt decided to close off all online work, and I barely even managed to get those measly $105. That's when I was like, okay, this is going to shit, let's not stay here. Also, I didn't even consider the fact that I had military service to do back then, so regardless of the Central Bank shutting down online work, I would have opted to leave anyway. This just makes it significantly harder because, as I said, exchange rate ensures that no job I get here will enable me to get out. And I do have a job, kind of. You see, I wasn't joking when I said I can't start my life until I do the goddamn service. Aside from not having a college degree, which is something everyone here does, it isn't special like in the West, nor does it mean you're actually good at anything. Most employers here require proof that you're clear from the military just so they can avoid headache. So the fact I even managed to find a somewhat decent job without having a qualification or needing military clear status is a fucking miracle that I willed into existence. The job is fine all things considered the pay is all right for the amount of work i do the work itself is not too hard and i don't have to work for that many hours the boss is a dickhead but you know i'm a master at getting along and the fact i have no criminal record living here vouches for that and to emphasize how hard it is to get an opportunity like this here in my situation let me tell you about a friend of mine from college bro had a job doing labor work on a farm you know something most students would try at some point he got paid 100 Egyptian pounds a day for his shift, but the shift can go as long as it needs. He told me that one time he worked 21 hours straight and had to take the next day off so he could rest. And he didn't get paid for that day off, obviously. And he obviously faced a lot of abuse, didn't get a place to stay, food or any form of benefits from that work. So I think it's not far-fetched to say that college student level jobs here are on par with working in a cotton field in the US a couple of centuries back. All that is to say, I am aware of how blessed I am with the chance I got, but even that, on a good month, pays me like 1600 Egyptian pounds, that's less than $50 a month. Assuming I save it all, I still cannot even dream to get out of here at this rate. Not within the time I have left, not even within my entire lifetime. I've wanted to get out for a long time, but I haven't really had a clear vision on how. The closer people to me on Discord know I want to go to Germany to study for two reasons. One, a student visa is pretty much the only safe bet for getting out of here in my current situation. And two, I actually want to finish my tuition. And Germany offers free higher education to international students, not only their citizens, at a pretty good quality too. 
not that I would complain if it wasn't. I cannot possibly be worse than the education here, even if they tried to be. But I wasn't really sure on how to go about it. But I did take some steps to prepare nonetheless. Jetzt lerne ich Deutsch. Ich habe erst seit dem 2. Februar angefangen und ich habe schon vor ein paar Tagen der B1 Abschlusstest auf meinem Kurs bestanden mit 82%. Zwar habe ich noch so viel zu tun, das weiß ich. Deshalb gehe ich immer noch weiter. Ich nehme es so ernst. Ich lerne fast jeden Tag, mindestens eine Stunde lang. Natürlich mache ich noch Fehler. Wahrscheinlich jetzt auch. Aber ich glaube, ich bin schon gut. Besonders wenn man bedenkt, dass ich erst vor nur sieben Monaten angefangen habe. Übrigens, ich habe keine Übersetzung für dieses Stück genutzt, außer genau drei Worte. Pretty thick, pretty cool, huh? To any Germans watching, I'm sorry for the noise pollution I may have just subjected you to. Here, have some eardrums. My treat. And the other side. There. All good. Also, did I mention you look awesome today? So anyway, as I was saying, I now have a rough idea of how I'm gonna actually do this. As I said, I really was hoping things would get better and I would manage to do this all, my, all on my own. But yeah, as you see, things are only getting worse and my time's running out. I looked up the application process for foreign students, how it's supposed to go once I am there, the visa application, the whole nine yards. I still am missing some information and need to make some more preparations, mainly figuring out how the finance of it works and getting an officially recognized B1 certificate, which I'll be getting from the Goethe Institute since they have branches in Egypt. So when I feel like I'm ready, I'll head down there and take the test. I even looked up a couple of potential universities in Germany and I'm still deciding between them. I'm just setting this financial goal now so it has more time to collect because I won't have very long left by the time I am ready to take the step. And that's where I need your help. You see, in order to even get my student visa, I need to have one of three things. The first being a host who's willing to vouch and provide for me during my study period, which would save me needing proof of funds as well as some waiting periods and a bunch of paperwork. While that would be awesome, I'm not really expecting any of you to do that for me, I'm just a random guy on the internet after all. But you know, if anyone's actually down, hit me up on Discord I guess. <laughs> the other thing is a German someone to marry, which would cut this journey even shorter, but again, I don't know about that. So the only realistic option is to get that fucking proof of funds, something called a blocked account, which is basically an account in a German bank from which the German state controls my monthly spending in order to ensure that I can provide for myself there for the first year, during which I'll be getting settled in, maybe getting a side job, growing my channel, you know, actually living life, something I'm unable to do here. That bank account needs to have a minimum of 11,208 euros in it, which currently equates to 12,065 US dollars. And all of this information is publicly available on the DAAD website, along with a bunch of other information and resources if anyone is interested. So I've set a goal on my Buy Me A Coffee page for that amount, and I ask anyone watching, if you can, kindly help with it. It's a steep sum, but even if we don't hit it, every little bit is a step closer and a great help. I'm also working as hard as I can, looking for ways to make money, I even found some student support programs in Germany that I plan to apply for when the time comes. I'm also trying to find any loopholes to work online without getting my shit blocked, confiscated or even getting arrested. Because let's be real, working in real life and getting paid in Egyptian pounds is just not gonna cut it. This ain't a chief. And even if I like somehow rob the bank or whatever, I might still have difficulty getting my money from here to Germany. It's legal and all, but who the fuck knows what they could do to get in my way. They're getting more desperate by the day to keep any form of money in here, especially hard currency. I'm gonna let you all go now. Thank you for listening to my frustrated rant and cry for help, and thanks in advance to anyone who helps, as well as anyone who has already helped. You guys are all awesome, and your help is greatly appreciated. Peace out, homies, and here's to a better future.